What's up guys and gals and welcome back to another Division 2 video. Thank you all for the continuous love and support that you have shown me just over the last several weeks. I am very blessed and I'm very appreciative of all the support that you've been showing me. And so I've heard the masses and y'all wanted a completely, uh, I guess, a wrecking build that will just absolutely destroy those uh, cut and paste vector whiz build life stealing builds just completely shred them well then uh, i'm here to answer that call have no fear relentless is here and basically uh in my opinion i think the tides are turning uh once title basin uh, no pun intended uh actually came uh our way for the simple fact of this particular archetype weapon has not had any hits to it so it is complete and utter destruction but i'm gonna send you over to some gameplay and then afterwards, we'll hop right into the build. Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. He's dead? Nah, he's, he's, he's one shot. I'm getting ate up by NPCs, though. Come on, come down, come down, y'all. Oh, kid. look at that! Just brrr. oh, y'all see him? Hit fire, bitch! I'm about to get out again. What the fuck? Hit fire! Hit fire at his ass! Don't run him with that vector shit on me. LMG meta, bitch. Man, these NPCs be cooking. Yeah, let's get out. Let's push out of here. As soon as we get finished with these. Yo, man, I hope I could extract this shit. Haha, uh -huh, they went rogue on me, but I still got the shit. Keep fucking fine, I'll come back and help you kill those fucking bastards. If I get this off, I'm gonna kill them. Got it on, I got it on. Oh, 
Yeah, I got a Maki pad, homie. I'm good. Another player could come though, so I gotta be on point. I can't believe they grabbed my loot and they didn't grab the, the press games. Oh, you down one of them. Good shit. Can't wait to come and help you. No, I killed oh, you. Two of them. Yeah, both of those motherfuckers. Oh, there's still two more. I'm coming. I should get to three seconds. I could come. Yeah, I could come your way. Coming your way. There's two more, right? Nah, they're dead. Got all of them. And he had a military P416 on him. My bitch! As you can see there, it works really, really nicely. No matter what the situation is in both PBE or PVP. There are some tweaks that can be addressed to conform to your playstyle, and you know it can be fine-tuned and fine-polished. If you prefer more damage to elites than what I currently already have, by all means, you can tweak it to your liking. This is not a uh, dead set, build it this way, this way, this way only, it is the best way. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying this is catered to my playstyle, and I like a lot of damage. And, you know, if you like the uh, different types of, such as more damage to elites, uh, you know, want to tweak things here and there, such as if you want to rock the lullaby as your secondary, if you want to cut cartwheels on the ground and get 25 rounds back versus taking one second to reload your, your sidearm to get the whole 100 rounds reloaded, then by all means, if you like, you know, flipping and flopping around the ground, go for it. I just choose not to because I actually timed it and it takes longer cutting cartwheels it ain't like you can't be shot. I mean, as much people like to say, you know, you know, flipping around, yeah, you might, you know, they might miss a couple bullets. But on PC, I mean, you can flop around, but yeah, you're going to basically get beamed. So why cut cartwheels when there's so much cover around when you can easily just pull out your sidearm, reload it, because it's already empty in your, you know, your side anyway. So you're just going through the reload animation that takes one second versus takes longer than one second to actually cut that cartwheel on the ground and then maintain your composure and then so-called continue in the fight versus um, take one split second behind a box cover car. This is all this cover around there. I mean, it's not like you're, you're trying to fight with an LMG built in the middle of you know an open field or open street with there, when there is no cover. That's just silly. So in my opinion... The lullaby as a secondary uh, is just more or less gimmicky. It's not really that viable, in my opinion. Uh, and that's just my opinion, not speaking ill will of anybody else. And then also, just like I incorporated the two-piece uh, True Patriot. Of course, I dubbed it True Trash because it definitely, definitely needs some work. Just like all the new gear sets do. But just imagine once those two pieces get fixed, and that's going to make the people builds that you know made and crafted builds utilizing the two piece ten percent armor that much stronger. I don't have two pieces of true patriot in this build, but I did incorporate them in another one, and I already knew that it was bugged. But that's just going to make that build even more stronger. Now, if I wanted to utilize it in such as this build, when it gets fixed, maybe. But you know, I got tired of the numerous comments as far as you know it's bugged of course we know it's bugged but you know we're here to more or less open up dialogue for creativity and builds and you know things of that nature not just more or less cut and paste the same old same old and this is basically i've already done this build but this is like the upgraded version you want to become an lmg lordis you want to ride the wave of the changing meta because the lmgs have not seen the hit like other archetype weapon builds have, such as Safeguard, Rifles, Marksman Rifles. Uh, the ARs even took a hit because of the reduction in the magazine size. Things of this nature. But the LMG is, has remained unscathed, unharmed, and it is still going to reign supreme. So get ready for the devastating destruction of the Hitfire LMG Lordis. Yes, that is the baby right there. 38.5K. Yes. Ain't she sweet? And it comes with unhinged, and instead of optimized, uh, once I find one, 
I will put Allegro on it for that additional rate of fire. But holy Jesus. 38.5. And that's not even taking in the consideration of Unstoppable Force. Of 256k armor. For another 50% damage buff after a kill. Imagine. So that alone is complete destruction. And you accompany that by hip fire, then yeah, they don't stand a chance. Those vector life stealing, no. Especially on console, I see way too many. I just ran into a whole group and they all try to ADS. And then I whip right around them. And then after, you know, completely destroying them, then they have to whip out the shield on top of it. He didn't stand a chance with that either. So that is why I completely believe that if things continue, it is going to be the LMG meta and no longer the Vector meta. But let's continue. My secondary is uh, just a, another LMG. It is the MK, but as you can see, the damage is significantly a little bit lower. But 29.7k is still not bad at all. And it has 633 RPM unhinged. Allegro and Everlasting. Everlasting, eh. But basically the same thing. Accuracy, rate of fire, accuracy, and then a little bit more of stability. Because this is my long ranger. And this is for my up close and personal uh, hip fire. So you can see and kind of know the difference. Now, you could use an optimize uh, such as I have on that, or like some people have put the two-piece of uh, the new gear set for the 20% handling because they're trying to counter the negative effect of unhinged. But I assure you, you do not need it. You're wasting two gear piece slots to where you can actually have gear that has talents on them that you can make it more powerful and yet very, very much more viable without the 20% handling. I'm going to show you why later on, but let's hop into the build. Let's start off with the main components, and that is, of course, on the chest piece. Yes, things can still be tweaked and a lot stronger, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I think this chest piece actually fit very, very nicely. It has a whopping 10% weapon damage, bonus armor, and health. And for that one piece, yeah, you get 10% assault rifle damage if you want to run an assault rifle as your secondary, but... I utilize it just because it does have that high stat in weapon damage. It has both health and bonus armor. And then, of course, the Fenders A and B are able to have two talents. Thus, I can still have Unstoppable Force and Harden and another 10% armor. And then it has a defensive mod slot. And I have 2736 health, 1647 armor on kill, and 1.5% extra incoming healing. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I've been sick here late, so I apologize. But then let's go over the next key component, the backpack. Now the backpack, uh, I need a better one. Um, this is the best one I have come across. It had a low armor stat on it, but after you know re-rolling it, as you see I modified it, it did bump it up to 514. But instead of the crit chance, I don't really see any you know point in it uh, being on this, but it is what it is. I mean, you know, you can't hit crits with 0% crit chance, but we're going off raw damage. So it has hardened on it. It had the bonus armor, the weapon damage, and it had, you know, some skill power because I don't want to be, you know, exactly um, naked when it comes to skills because even, you know, having a, a little something in a mod slot that's, you know, viable and able to unlock, be unlocked through skill power on your skills can that can make, you know, either your, your healing a little faster, more uh, charges being, you know, coming back off cooldown, having more charges to drop, duration, things of this nature at any little fraction of percentage, you know, helps out. But instead of skilled, I definitely would probably prefer uh, vital, but I can't put vital here because vital is more or less a, an active. And this is kind of more like a, a passive to an extent where it has requirements. So I, I could not switch in and out. Now, if I wanted to, I could maybe go along with like a, a safeguard and, and harden with a little tweaking. I just have to take out the offensive mods out of my gear. But is safeguard really that viable? And, you know, whether it be PvP or PvE, now that, you know, the nerf. Yeah, it is still a very good talent. But I'm not utilizing strained or things of that nature or clutch. I'm not relying on crits, so... You know, is it really that viable? In this case, it is not. 
So I just would rather have Vital or some more damage to Elites if I was able to actually have a Petroff backpack then in which I could actually apply it to. And the grind continues. I do have a very, very low score uh, backpack. It drops my armor. So even you know if I was able to even put it on this and utilize Safeguard, it still wouldn't be as effective. So I want to be as tanky as possible. So that's why I went with this backpack. And plus, the backpack gives me uh, additional 10% LMG damage because it is a Petrov backpack. Now moving on to the gloves and knee pads. It is two Overlord armaments. Just specifically for the two-piece, the 7.5% total armor. So I went this route. Instead of having four pieces of the new gear set that gives you 10% armor, right? And then, uh, as of right now, the 10% you know, non-existent damage to armor. So that's why well, waste four when I get more armor out of just utilizing three. And by which two of that comes by way of Overlord Armaments. Seven and a half percent total armor. And then I have seven percent LMG damage. And if you wanted to and run a chatterbox as your secondary and and you know worst case scenario you have to pull it out, then you you know this has additional five percent, you know, uh damage on it too. But not really needed because we are running double LMGs. And then no mod slot. And it has hard hitting on it. And now the knee pads. 7120 bonus armor. Um, yeah, I believe it had like a very, really, really low armor. So I'm like, well, I'm going to give my all out best. And, uh, you know, put the actual cap that it showed me on there. So not too bad. Another 514. 7120 bonus armor. Another 15% damage to elites. 1.5% weapon damage. 1.5% headshot damage. And 3% optimal range in the mod slot. Now the other piece, which is the Guard. That's another 5% total armor. So then just those three pieces get 12.5% off three pieces versus four pieces of the new gear set that only gives you 10% armor, and then it has no way of have actually talents being added onto it. Some of the masks do have high, uh, you know, 33 some odd percent, if I've seen so far, damage to elites. But, you know, on the other pieces, the other three, you know, no talents whatsoever. You're stuck with, you know, the basic baked-in talents of it to where you can't really mod it, such as having hard hitting and things of this nature in the mod slot, in the, in the talent slots of the new gear sets. But this gives me 25-20 health on kill. I'd rather have just straight-out health. Uh, but as you can see, it had, uh, I believe, spotter or something on it and was a really a crappy talent, and it was the best and basically the only Gila Guard, other than this one, but they both have helped on a kill. Um, but I wasn't able to actually put damage to elites on this piece. But it would be really nice to have that 36% hazard protection along with damage to elites. And then actual health. So if I could just get regular health instead of health on the kill, then, you know, I'm good to go. But basically, we just want one piece of Gila Guard with high, high or good stats when it comes by hazard protection and health along with the damage to elites and the 5% total armor. Because the more armor you have, the stronger unstoppable force is going to be on your chest piece. Because you get 2% of, for every 10% of armor that you have after getting a kill. So that's it right now is a over 50% extra damage. Now let's go over the holster. It has 10.5% crit hit chance. It's basically my best option of what I currently have right now as far as with a filler up. And filler up is reloading from empty reloads all weapons. I could care less about the 10.5% crit chance, but, you know, whatever crit chance, if one happens to actually crit, then, you know, by all means, if I'm at zero, then I can't crit whatsoever. So, I mean, at least there's a possibility and a chance, but we're not taking chance on crit chance. We're going raw damage. And then, of course, in the mod slot, 2.5% weapon damage and, you know, some SMG stuff. But, yeah, they do have um, weapon handling mods that has uh, that on 2% wise, so you could actually have that. There are knee pads if you wanted to substitute hard hitting um, that, while in cover, will give you 25% weapon handling. And since this, this is a cover-based shooter and there's so much cover everywhere and anywhere that, you know, it's not more or less designed or meant to... Be used as an AR, but it can be. You can still beam with it. But, I mean, it's just like, you know, there's so much cover, so why waste two pieces of gear 
that can't have talents on it for a 20% weapon handling when it's not necessarily needed. It just takes some practice. But anyways, so a quick repeat. One piece Petra for the 10% LMG damage with hardened on it. And we'd rather have vital or some more damage to elites on it. Then we have one piece Gilly Guard with damage to elites and 5% armor. Then two Overlord Armaments for the 7.5% armor. With both have hard hitting on it for the damage to elites. And then of course uh, weapon damage by way of LMG. And then on the chest piece, Unstoppable Force with Hardened and then Filler Up. Let's go outside and I'll show you if you haven't already seen what Filler Up does and how much easier it is instead of actually having a Lullaby as a secondary. So if you don't even want to use Chatterbox for the extra rate of fire with the uh, incorporation of Filler Up to where you can have 20% bonus uh, fire rates by utilizing and synergizing both of those. So that, that alone... If you time it and practice with it, it's very easy because with the chatterbox, after a kill, you have five seconds to reload to get that 20% rate of fire. Well, LMGs take five seconds to reload. That's where filler up comes in. And I'll show you and demonstrate. So this is about the typical range that you know most engagements are in the DZ. And usually it's a lot closer up than that by way of the whole vector. But let's just take this as more or less a baseline. So, as you're wailing, you know, you do whatever. You're aiming down target. And as you can see, the, you know, weapon handling isn't that bad at all. You can still absolutely shred. No need for it whatsoever. And then, you just go through the animation of reloading your pistol and look. Bam. Both are already back to 100. You don't have to... One second. Okay, that was almost four seconds just in two cartwheels because you can't just spam it. It just still takes a moment. So that's only 25 rounds for you flopping around uh, acting all crazy. So, which is actually more vital? Or valuable, I should say. Going into battle right beforehand and right before an engagement, you just expunge all your ammo... It put it away empty, and like I said, a double barrel is uh, a lot, even a lot faster than that. It's a stoosh stoosh, and then you cycle it to your weapon, keep it back empty. You go into battle and do whatever you need to be. And basically, you just switch back, go through the reload animation, and you're back to 100 rounds in each. So you can expand 200 rounds, and then reload both within a second. So why in the heck do I want to run a secondary shotgun that I have no shotgun damage, you know, specced into and won't use, basically just like the chatterbox, just to gain 25 rounds for flopping around the ground? You know, this is just my opinion, and I'm not knocking anybody else for trying it. It might work for some people. Just in my opinion, on console, filler up is a lot more viable than the lullaby as a secondary the chatterbox accompanied with filler up is, in my opinion, still a lot more viable than running lullaby as a secondary. And you do not need the two, the two pieces of the new gear set for weapon handling. It's, uh, it's unnecessary. You're just more or less kneecapping yourself. Basically, all you need to do is get you two overlords, a gila guard, some petrov, some unstoppable force at filler up and some good LMGs with unhinged and Allegro on them. And then just become an LMG Lordis. Practice. Know the ins and outs of your build. Knows it, know its flaws, its weaknesses. And you already know its strengths. And how to help you hit fire. Do you notice the gun on your back? If you run into LMGs or you got an AR on your back, that rifle butt is always at the center of your screen. So that can help you when it comes to hip fire. So basically, you want to just keep that rifle bud more or less level. And you saw that dust just continuously fly up. All it takes is practice. And those LMGs 
will just wreak havoc on all those little cut and paste vectors. I'm not saying I'm not knocking the build, but it's time for a change. It's time for the LMG meta. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate all the love and support. Hope you enjoyed it. Ground and pound that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content, if you're enjoying the build, and become part of the Gorilla Nation and become a part of the Gorilla Fan. Because if you happen to be new, ground and pound that sub button. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you fudging later.